The southern Tel Aviv town of Jaffa has long been a symbol of Jewish and Arab coexistence in Israel. And one popular family business is proof of it. The Abu Lafia Bakery is famous for its delicious breads and pastries, but it's also well known for a very special Passover story. Saeed Abu Lafia is here to tell us a touching tale. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So I understand that Abu Lafia Bakery is actually closed during Passover for a very special reason. Can you True. tell us about that? In 1969, we had a neighbor in, uh, beside the bakery in Jaffa, which had a shoe factory. His name was Rabbi Zaman Stauber. Uh, Rabbi Stauber uh, didn't like the fact and felt bad in seeing lots of Jews waiting in line during Passover. So he was good friends with my grandfather, Said, which I'm called after, named after. He came to my grandfather and asked him, Said, if I would get you money, would you close in Passover? I told him, are you crazy? You know how much money we make in Passover? So I asked him, how much? He told me it was the equivalent of the cost of an apartment in Jaffa in one week. He said, if I arrange it, would you close? I said, yeah. A week before Passover, Rabbi Stauber comes to my grandfather with money and with an agreement. He asks him, here's the money, sign that you'll close in Passover. My grandfather signs, does renovations, take vacation, enjoys it, and every year, a week before Passover, Rabbi Stauber would come to him, pay him the money. He would arrange it from different donors and municipality and uh, from himself also. And uh, my grandfather would close. It was this way for five years in a row. In the sixth year, my grandfather went to the rabbi before he got them and said, Rabbi Stauber, I got such a blessing in the rest of the year from closing in Passover, I'll continue closing for free. And since then, we, we continue the, my grandfather's tradition. It's amazing. And so Abu Lafi at that point became very successful as well, right? Yes. It's, uh, a lot, we have lots of uh, uh, clients that are religious. We're kosher, but we don't have a certificate as we open on Saturday. It's different than in New York. And uh, people respect us because of that. And also, although they know we don't have a certificate coming into our place, um, we respect them back by closing Passover and Yom Kippur. Although we have lots of Arab clients and non-Jewish clients as well, but majority is people that do uh, uh, do do Passover. So, how have other businesses in Yafo, re you know, reacted to the fact that you guys close on Passover? Has it been positive, negative? They celebrate. They're making more money. <laughs> they're selling what we're not selling. There you go. So you guys are actually doing a favor to yeah, everybody in like, the yeah, area. It's a win-win situation for everyone. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, tell us a little bit about your family. I know that you guys have been in Jaffa for uh, generations, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of The bakery of alone has been since 1879. Wow. 137 years, that's what you call experience. And uh, the family itself, we've been documented for uh, nearly 500 years in Jaffa. And we are actually accountable for many uh, monuments that have been built in Jaffa, including bridges and uh, famous buildings by architects and engineers in the family. And it's funny because we've talked about this before, but I said that Jaffa is a town that's in south of Tel Aviv, but you told me no. Yeah, Jaffa is. Uh, is over 4,000 years old and it has the oldest operating port in the world and you know Tel Aviv is 100 years old so, it, so you, you need to respect win. it more. <laughs> right so you know why do you think Jaffa has become kind of the symbol of coexistence within Israel between both Jews and Arabs? Jaffa in Arabic is called Im al Gharib, means the mother of the stranger because of the fact that we had such a vibrant port we had, uh, we were accustomed always to lots of immigrants and lots of foreigners coming to the port all the time. So, you know, people uh, got used to uh, foreigners and immigrants and got more, uh, uh, you could say, uh, regular to that and, you know, they respected them and didn't have a problem. They weren't afraid of the strange. So, you know, over the years that kind of sentiment kept on, including when the Jews came and today we're much more open and we have a very good coexistence between Jews and Arabs in, in Jaffa. Does your family feel a certain type of responsibility to maintaining that coexistence? Of course, you know, it's like, uh, you know, nobody wants bad things happening in Jaffa. It's also bad for business, so let's be honest about it. But also, you know, everybody wants to live in peace. You can see what's happening in the rest of the Middle East, nobody wants that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming in. No I'm going to come and eat at Abu Lafi again. I've You're already been welcome. there several times, the but uh, there we go, on the house. <laughs> Thanks so much. My pleasure.